Hello and welcome to the character animation series in Blender by Thilman Studios. In this video, I'll teach you how to do basic animation in Blender. This video will mostly suit beginners who have a very basic knowledge of the software and is intended to sort of help you to sort of go in and just animate something. So let's get straight into it. Open up a new Blender scene and change this mode here to animation mode. What this does is it gives you more windows to work with. This is sort of set up in a way to sort of be more efficient for animators to work with. This, uh, now I'll briefly describe what each of these windows does. Uh, this window here is the 3D viewport. So this is where you have all your 3D models, your characters, cameras, lights, and things like that. Here is the camera viewport. So whatever this camera sees, you'll see over here. This is the outliner. The outliner pretty much shows every single object that you have in your 3D viewport. So your camera, your cube, your lamp uh, is pretty much all there. So the main reason why we have an outliner is, say for example, you have an epic mountain scene with tons of trees and rocks and rivers and all that kind of stuff. And you want to find one specific element. Uh, sometimes it might be a little bit difficult and you may, you may be playing Where's Wally to find that object, whatever, whichever object that you're looking for. So that's where the outliner comes in. It sort of makes your life a lot more easy to work with. And if you can't find it in the outliner, you can always just search it here. So for example, if I type cube, you can just find it right there, the cube. So it really, really takes uh, helps take out the guesswork of finding where your object is, and you can just select it right there. And it really helps speed up your workflow. This is the properties window. The properties window pretty much sets the properties for everything in Blender. Um, since this is out of scope of this video, I won't really be explaining what each of these properties do. But throughout the character animation series, mostly these four properties here are the most important to us. Here is the timeline. So you obviously have your start frame, your end frame, the current frame that you're on. You can play your animation, pause it, go to the beginning of the animation, go to the end of the animation, and things like that. Here is the graph editor. So uh, you obviously see F curves here when you start to animate. F curves make it uh, easier for animators to polish their animations and add uh, a lot more tweaks and uh, effects that that are not sometimes not possible with just keyframes. Um, you will, might look into that a little bit today, but uh, won't really be going into it uh, in detail throughout the character animation series. Here is the dope sheet editor. So this is every keyframe that you create here will be shown here, and you can obviously play around with the keyframes in this area here. So uh, also I'll just be giving a very brief overview of how to do some basic manipulation in Blender. In Blender you can grab by pressing G, you can rotate by pressing R, and you can scale by pressing S. Blender allows you to do more advanced things than that. Uh, you can also move along X's. So grab X will obviously move along the X axis, grab Y along the Y, grab Z along the Z. Sorry, I pressed S, Z. So you can do loads of things. So R, X will rotate around the X, and S, Y scales along the Y. You can do tons and tons of things like that. Um, that's basically how you do some basic manipulation in Blender. All right, now it's time to do what the main focus of this tutorial is, to actually animate. So let's go to the front view by pressing 1. And we'll create, we'll create a keyframe by pressing the I key. I don't know why the to animate you need to press the I key. I thought it had to be A, but then I think A is already taken. So I'm going to press, you get all these options when you press the I key. To start off with, I'm just going to select location. And then we'll go to frame 50. Uh, and we're going to move the object, say grab X. I'm going to move along the X axis to somewhere around here, let's say. Then press I again, and then location. You'll see here that two keyframes have been created. One at frame one, and another at frame 50. So if I can now play back my animation by either pressing this play here, or a shortcut is to press Alt A. And there we see our first animation. How awesome does that look? Cool. All right, so one, one other thing we can do is we can adjust the timing of our animation. So if, say, for example, that I think 
This animation is a little bit too slow. I want to go a lot more quicker than that. I can always select the keyframe that I want. And I can move it in closer. You can see that yellow line at the on the timeline uh, being moved a little closer. And let's have move to frame 20. Now when I play it back, it's a lot more quicker. So you can obviously easily adjust the uh, timing and such for your animation very, very easily. And that's about it, really. Now I'm going to show you a little bit of F-curve tweaking. So F-curve obviously gives the animator a lot more control over their animation. So, for example, if I... You'll notice here that... Uh, let's, let's move this keyframe back a little bit. Let's say to frame uh, 200. I'm going to set this end time to 200. Um, you can see it's a little bit... Okay, maybe that's too slow. Let's say 100. So the, uh, the reason why I did this is because uh, it's getting a little hard to move it to 100. Okay, one thing you can do is you can press grab minus 1 if you can't uh, drag it more accurately. Like, dra grab minus 1, by the way, moves it one frame back, whatever keyframe you selected. Okay, so um, if I play back now, it's a little bit slow. But now you can see exactly what this F-curve is doing. You can see that as it approaches uh, to the end, it slows down. It doesn't just halt to an end. It just slows down like that. So we can obviously play around with that. So say we wanted to sort of speed up and end really, really quickly. Then we can just go ahead and just change something like that. That's going to make it... Instead of going up and then slowing down, decelerating down. Oh, that's the word, decelerating. It, re it decelerates as it goes towards the end. We can change that and make it accelerate towards the end. Bang. You can see it sort of accelerate there. So it gives the animator, as an animator, you have a lot more control over that. And you can also make it overshoot the mark a little bit. A bit of that follow through, that's some of the stuff that we learned in the 12 principles of animation. And see so you sort of bounce back. So as an animator, we can make these kind of tweaks and polish without really putting in more unnecessary keyframes and things like that. That's pretty much why the F-curve editor is there, so that we have a lot more control over our animation. And that's basically it. The, uh, that's, that's how you animate. Another way to animate, let's just quickly delete these keyframes. Uh, sorry is to press this button. What this does is when you press this one, let's go to the beginning of the key, uh, beginning of the animation again, and I've set this to, uh, what, as you can see, like a record button. So what this does, if I grab this, you can see that it says here auto keying on. So that means any what, whatever manipulation I do it, grab, rotate, or scale, it will automatically set a keyframe there. So let's say I start here. Bang, a keyframe is already created. Let's say I move to frame 100 and I move it here, rotate it, scale it up, scale it on the x-axis, I don't know. Uh, there you go. It's, cre it's created a keyframe here, and the one it uses is lock rot scale. So if I go I, this option here, that's what it uses by default. You can see it creates the location, rotation, scale, and each of these can be modified and played around with. So if I play back this animation now, obviously, we get we get our anim uh, we get our object that animates by changing its location, its rotation, and its scale. So that's pretty cool. Playing around with these, these F curves, I know it looks a little crazy, but you probably need to be more advanced to know what these each does. So by selecting this, for example, you, I just select the Z location. So I can obviously move the Z and give, add more tweaks and things like that. So that's pretty much how to do an animation. If you don't like to do auto keyframing, sometimes you may, you may make mistakes by where you don't want to actually animate something, you just want to move an object, and you don't realize that, uh, oh no, it's something, my animate movements are all being recorded. You can simply, well, I'll just quickly delete this. You can simply, I'll see, I'll just turn this off. You can simply uh, set a keying, what is this called? A keying set. 
So what, sometimes people get tired of pressing I and then selecting an option and then moving another few keyframes I and then another option. You can just set a, a default here. So say for example, I want to set a location as default. Now when you press I, um, it's always going to be a location. And then if I move, or, or you can even change it to rotation, just rotation. So that if I move in this area and I move it here, so it moves the object from that position to this position, then rotate it, and hit I, you get that rotation. So you can see a keyframe has been created for a location, a keyframe has been created for a rotation. So you can do tons and tons of things like that. It's very, very easy to animate in Blender. And obviously a very, very quick as well. One of the reasons why I animate in Blender is because I do all my character animations by myself and I feel that Blender allows me to create character animations very, very quickly and efficiently. Uh, granted, I haven't tried other 3D software and I, I don't really have the money, quite cheap. So um, that's why I prefer to use Blender. But yeah, I, I'm, I'm just, I generally find that Blender is the breeze to work with when, when animating. So just to quickly recap, to animate in Blender, you press I and select either of your options. And if you don't want to see these options, you just select your keying set there. If you don't like that, if you want it to be default to lock, lock rot scale, which is location rotation scale, you can just press that and then move your object wherever. And that pretty much gives you options to animate. So I hope this video has taught you how to do some basic animation in Blender. In the next video, I'll be introducing the bouncing ball animation and teaching you guys how to do that. And we'll also be following some of the stuff that we learned from the previous videos, such as the 12 principles of animation and some of the stuff that we learned today in this video. So I hope to see you in the next video. As usual, if you have any comments, feedback and so on, please feel free to drop it in the comments below as that will help me improve. And please subscribe, like, share and all that kind of stuff. And thanks for watching.